Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and with the recent incident of an alleged uh, suicide by a well-known uh, 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 social media user, the issue of cyberbullying has surfaced in Fiji and today joining me himself is a, a very avid user of social media, John Aptard, who is also a lawyer with Monroe List. Mr. Aptard, thank you for speaking to us uh, to discuss this issue of uh, cyberbullying. Just to kick off the discussion, uh, how is cyberbullying defined? Uh, uh, in Fiji's laws and ju jurisdiction? Uh, Anish, cyberbullying, the term cyberbullying is not defined in our law. Uh, we have a um, piece of legislation called the Online Safety, uh, what's the, the Online Safety Act 2018. So we've had it for six years. This, one of the purposes of the act, it says, is to regulate cyberbullying. Right? But it doesn't actually then use the word cyberbullying when it regulates the behavior. What it regulates is electronic communications that cause serious harm to an individual. So yes, cyberbullying is included in the regulation, but it's not a term that is used except as one of the purposes. Mm. So is cyberbullying defined in other jurisdictions overseas? Uh, in some and in some jurisdictions yes in some jurisdictions no because that's just a description right that's a that's a that's a um, colloquial convenient description for uh, behavior online that threatens or intimidates other people what the act our act does and other acts do is uh, more precise about the kind of harm that is regulated mm -hmm. When you say online, you're referring to social media? Uh, all. Um, the Online Safety Act doesn't just regulate social media. It regulates websites. It regulates all e electronic messages. So it, it regulates text messages. It regulates Messenger. It regulates Viber. It regulates comments. Mm -hmm. All of anything electronic is regulated mm -hmm. by the Online Safety Act. Why was the death of the social media uh, activist recently mm -hmm. defined as cyberbullying? Um, that's just a colloquial term. Like cyberbullying is something that we use in conversation. It's not, like I said, a legal term. Mm -hmm. but cyber cyberbullying is defined as, or is understood. Sorry, not defined. Is understood as behavior online which is threatening or intimidating mm -hmm. to another person. So that's, uh, a, a, and, and the thing to remember is cyberbullying can um, occur even if what you're saying is true. It's not, doesn't have to be false. It's not like defamation. Mm -hmm. It's online behavior that threatens or intimidates somebody mm -hmm. because of things that are true or untrue. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 um, the recent death of uh, Renandi Keviti has been called by some people, including me, uh, an example of cyberbullying, because it was preceded by many posts, many shares of a post that accused her of some kind of commercial um, activity. Mm. So it, uh, and th you could see that the sharing was um, intended to intimidate the subject and threaten the subject, mm. and shortly after, um, you know, th the tragedy occurred. So clearly, you know, there was cyberbullying the day before through that sharing, mm. because it was it was, t and and all of the posts and the comments were negative about the subject, and they were there to intimidate and hurt. Mm. That's what cyberbullying is. Mm. Given what you have told me, uh, the Online Safety Commission and the Fiji Police Force, do they, do they have the legal teeth to go and grab somebody? Yes. The, as far as the law is concerned, the online, well, like any government uh, regulator, they, they don't really do anything unless somebody complains. Mm -hmm. Right, so first you've got to have a complaint. Yes, you can go to the Online Safety Commission, in theory, and make a complaint. The Online Safety Commission has two um, alternatives. One is the complaints or the civil procedure, and the other is the criminal procedure. For the civil procedure, you can make a complaint, if the, and you, you can only make a complaint if the post um, is is likely to cause or is intended to cause serious emotional harm okay or involves uh, an intimate 
recording. And so that could be a photo, a video of sexual activity or nudity or that kind of thing where it's being circulated without your consent. So if you make one of these two complaints, they can they then look at it, they decide whether to investigate. If they decide to investigate, they call the other party in and try to reconcile you and get you to get that person to take the thing down or make reparations. And if they, the other party doesn't want to, they will then can then take the party to the high court. If they refuse to investigate, you, the complainant, then have the right to take it to the high court yourself for civil uh, remedies, right? But you can't go to court about it until you've complained first to the commission. Separately from that mm -hmm. is the criminal offense, where it's uh, you can lodge a complaint uh, with the commission of a criminal offense. Um, and the, originally, the commission, uh, um, when it was under Ms. Dunn, entered into a MOA with the police, where the commission would then refer it to the police for investigation and prosecution. Um, recently, I saw some posts last week which suggest that the police are taking complaints directly now. So I, I'm not sure. So you, you'd have to check if the police will accept a complaint directly. But there are also criminal offences under the Act for posts or messages that either create or are intended to create serious emotional harm or involve um, intimate recordings. How can the Online Safety Commission uh, and the police uh, be proactive in uh, highlighting uh, what is cyberbullying and to prevent it from happening? Well, they need to do education. It's about education, and education is about resources. And resources are about human resources and about money. Um, when the commission was set up, it was first, the commission, consists of the commissioner. So there's no, it's not, not a commission with members and then a, a director. The, the whole commission is made up of the commissioner and the commissioner's officers. So when uh, the commission was first set up, the first commissioner was Ms. Anne Dunn. Um, I recall at that time that she did a bit of work on awareness. Um, because we ended up on panels together and I would read articles about what she said or see on social media. So there was initially work. Um, she resigned to go somewhere else. I don't know where she's gone, but there has not been a substantive commissioner since. There is an acting commissioner, um, but uh, there has been very little public awareness that I'm aware of. So I suspect that there are no resources and I'm not sure that the acting commissioner is uh, in a position to do effective public uh, education. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to emphasize, and this is turning into a bit of a lecture, I'm sorry, but the, the role of commissioner is a very, very important one. And it requires an individual with specific skills. You've got to be a lawyer or have some legal ability to understand properly what the law is and what you know what to do with a complaint from a legal point of view so you do need legal skills but the most important um, part of the role is preventative and educational you know because what's happening here is our society is participating on social media in a way that is not acceptable for a lot of people right so and it actually is against the law in certain ways. So that's happening because the public is not aware of what the law is. The public is not aware of what needs to happen or what they're allowed to do and what's not allowed to do. So clearly the commission has a very, very big educational role. And education can't be done just by anybody. Not every lawyer is an effective teacher of the public. And changing behavior changing the public's behavior, especially once it's ingrained, is not easy. You know, you need to understand the ways in which public behavior can be changed. And people study that. So you need a commissioner who either has that skill or who understands that he or she needs to engage an expert to help them get that 
edu public education out. Design the public education campaign, how you target it, what content it is. And it's really, really important because people are dying and children are affected. Mm -hmm. Long answer, sorry. Yes, yes, so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, could you define then uh, the difference between cyberbullying and harassment? Uh. Uh, Cyberbullying and harassment can be the same thing, right? But harass okay, there, there's, harassment has two meanings, right? Harassment in general um, conversation, um, in general use, is intimidating or threatening behavior that's targeted, that is intended to make somebody feel bad, right? Under our law, under the Human Rights Commission and Anti-Discrimination Act, harassment has a narrower meaning, okay? We in Fiji regulate unfair discrimination. The public think unfair dis discrimination is adverse treatment for any reason. That's not correct. Mm -hmm. Legally, unfair discrimination is adverse or differential treatment based on a prohibited ground of discrimination. In other words, it's unfair discrimination if you treat somebody badly or you treat somebody better because of their race. That's one prohibited ground. Or their age, or their gender, or their sexual orientation, or their religion. Those are prohibited grounds. So legally, harassment is where you um, threaten, intimidate, or belittle somebody because of one of these things. So the Human Rights Commission has jurisdiction over those kinds of complaints. So it's harassment to treat a, a person differently for sexual reasons. That's sexual harassment. Racial harassment could be where in an office somebody's constantly telling anti Chinese jokes or anti-indigenous Fijian jokes. Jokes and those kinds of things based on these things are harassment as well. Or where you treat, you're rude to somebody because of one of these things. That's harassment. So that's harassment. Cyberbullying is, could include things like that, but it includes behavior online or through electronic communication that is set out to harm another individual because of that individual's identity and personality because of that person. We started, we'll take a short break and continue that discussion. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, and uh, John Apted uh, is uh, discussing uh, the issue of cyberbullying. Uh, Mr. Apted, uh, let me ask you, the argument is, if you are on social media, you are opening yourself to potential harassment and cyberbullying. Is that a fair argument? No, no, that's not fair. Um, I understand that argument. I've seen it. I, I'm on social media a lot myself, too much, in fact. Um, so I've, I've often seen that, that argument, but it's incorrect, and it's um, too narrow in this sense. So the assumption behind that idea is that social media is an open forum where n nothing is not allowed. Everything is allowed, and if you don't like it, go away. That's not exactly true. What people don't realize, okay, people ha in Fiji historically have not had a lot of freedom of expression. Okay, so when social media came along, suddenly, they, can, they feel they've got this platform, the whole world is listening to them, there's nobody in front of them, and they're tempted to say what all these years they couldn't say in the presence of their elders, in the presence of their family, the presence of their friends, and suddenly they've got this platform. And they enjoy that freedom, so they assume that it's absolute. Because nobody's told them, nay, nay, shay, nay, nay, it's not free. You, are, you may say what you like, but the law doesn't allow you to say things that hurt somebody else. You're free to express your opinions about political figures, about the events that are happening, but you may not set out to harm another person. So, the, the thing is, the, it's not for 
other the subjects of the bullying to stay out. The law is you the user are limited in what you can say. The other problem with that theory is that harm only happens to you if you're on social media. Be that's not true because the subject of the post may not be on Chat Fiji, but their reputation is affected by that post, by those photographs of them and their LT that somebody has posted. So they might not be there, but they are definitely harmed. Their children see it, their mother sees it, their uncle sees it, their workmates see it, their church members see it. They're harmed even if they might not be in Chat Fiji, whichever version of Chat Fiji we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's a fake argument. It, it, it's based on this idea that other people must take responsibility for what I'm saying. No. You are responsible for what you say. And you have the legal obligation to control what you're saying so that you do not hurt anybody else. Social media platforms in Fiji is brought to your hand by telecommunication companies in Fiji. Mm -hmm. Should they be held responsible for something like what has happened recently? They sh they're they not legally responsible because they don't participate in it, but I'm a very strong believer in the fact that if you're making money from an, an area where people are being hurt, you have an obligation to help mitigate and prevent harm arising out of your services. So, and that's a really, thank you for the question, Lenora, that's a really good question, because one of my hobby horses is I think that the telecoms companies that, you know, allow people to access social media should redirect some of their profits into educating people mm -hmm. about how to use uh, social media. So perhaps they, I mean, I suspect that the Online Safety Commission has not been active lately because of all, hasn't had resources. A very, very good thing that the telecoms can do is to fund or fund programs with the Online Safety Commission and the police and maybe the Ministry of Education to educate people about how to use social media, what to do if they're the victim of online bullying or harmful posts and that sort of thing. So yes, I think that the telecoms companies have a responsibility to do that. In the setting of an E2K relationship of Tauvu Tawale, uh, can that argument be used that he's my Tauvu, I can say anything to him or her and it does not uh, come under cyberbullying? Uh, does that, uh, will that hold water? Personally, I mean, I'm not full Fijian, um, so maybe I'm not qualified to, to comment, but personally as a Kailoma, as, as a Vasu, um, I don't think so. Um, and I have to deal with this, because I, I do a lot of employment law work, and I've had to deal with this issue in more than one employment situation for my clients, where you know somebody has said something um, nasty to another worker who's taken offense, and the first person says, oh no, but that's my tauvu or whatever, and I'm allowed to, but the other person doesn't like it. And it's ended up, you know, quite ugly. The point is, yes, that's a culture. Yes, that has a place, but it has a place in cultural interaction, social interaction in person. When you, when you are, um, in, in, in between each other in a small group, you're the only people who are witnessing the embarrassment of the subject. It's quite a different thing if you do it in the workplace where people who don't understand the relationship are hearing these nasty things about the, the subject and they'll interpret it differently. You're embarrassed in front of those people. You would not be embarrassed amongst people who understand the traditional context. And then you take it to social media. Web, uh, those web pages or those social media pay groups like Chat Fiji are global. You know, if I, you know, banter with you, what's acceptable in a, around a grog ball is not the same when people, thousands of people all over the world are witnessing it.
and laughing at you. And they're not your tauvu, they don't understand that. They just know that somebody has said something really derogatory about you. So that's, that kind of behavior is not appropriate for public pages. It may be appropriate for messages, but not for you know, public shaming like that. That brings me to the question on Facebook. Uh, can the Fiji government regulate Facebook or can they ask Facebook that we are want, we wanting to regulate you in this form or that form so that this doesn't happen in Fiji? They, well, a government can do what it likes, but whether Facebook wants to listen is another story. But the Online Safety Act, the existing act, does regulate um, Facebook it, uh, in, in a certain sense. What it says is that the act applies to conduct in Fiji or overseas, um, and it provides that once a complaint is made and it goes through the system, um, the, the court can ask the platform to remove stuff. And I'm aware that um, platforms like Facebook do voluntarily cooperate with um, you know, sort of government online safety bodies in the different countries, especially in regard to ch children's matters and sexual matters. So I, I'm aware that if you go to the Online Safety Commission and you say there's a video of me um, and my partner that somehow has been leaked and is being circulated, it's possible for the Online Safety Commission to request Facebook to use its software to delete it everywhere in the system. And they, they would do that especially where children are involved. I know that. Mm. Let's talk about uh, children, uh, as you've mentioned. Uh, do you think uh, the time has passed that uh, there hasn't been much awareness and now the children in schools, they are engaging themselves in cyberbullying as has, has been reported? Um, it's, it's, I, I don't have any personal knowledge because I don't interact with children on social media. But, um, well, at least, I, not that I know of, but I would imagine that it's, it's common because if adults are doing it <laughs> openly, um, children must be doing it. Everybody is doing it. So they must be harming each other, you know. So <laughs> we need to protect them, not just as the subjects of bullying, but from seeing, you know, obscene things, from seeing bullying of other people, distressing pictures, and that sort of thing. So yes, th there is a, a lot of work to be done to protect children. Mm. We'll take a short break, Mr. Apted, and continue with our discussion on the other side. Sure. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, uh, Mr. Apted. Let me ask you this question in the final segment. Uh, I usually joke with my uh, classmate from primary school I, and on social media on his timeline. I've posted that you were smacked by this teacher and you pooped in your pants. Mm -hmm. Is that cyberbullying? Well, it depends. It really does depend. It depends on him or her whether they took a f they will take offense to it and you know generally what what your friend's sensitivity is if um, if you know they are the kind who you know if if for example they hold they're a woman and they hold a very high position and they worked hard in their life to succeed and then you go and post that that could only be intended to hurt them and belittle them. And even if it's true that they pooped in their pants when they were five years old, that is cyberbullying. And that, if, it, if they go to the commission and say it caused me serious emotional harm, the commission will believe it because, yes, you'd be, you know, if you are a government minister and somebody, you know, says, reveals that when you were five years old you dirtied your, your pants, that would cause you serious harm 
or hidden, well, I don't know about a minister, but let's say you're a director of a company. But so, yes, even though it's true, that might be cyberbullying. So you have to be careful because it's different from joking to your face. You're telling the whole world something that's embarrassing about this person. Even in the recent case of the uh, alleged suicide, uh, it was a fact uh, that the person who, the deceased, was involved in some uh, alleged dubious acts. That was a fact, but it led to his death. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was a fact. We know that there was a complaint, that it started with a complaint by a customer about alleging a sharp practice. We don't know the circumstances of that, whether you know the money came and went to, went to pay for the services, but the other provider didn't show up. We don't know the facts. But in any case, even if the, what the customer was complaining about was true, it would still be cyberbullying to share it. And it would still be cyberbullying to report it if your intention was to harm the subject, to cause that person embarrassment and shame. Social media is not there to shame. And, and, and maybe I can just give you my little social studies theory. Um, traditionally in Fiji, the tradition has been from, from early times to control social behavior through shaming. You know, so we have certain strict rules. If you break, breach those social standards, you're punished by being shamed. You know, people shave their daughter's hair, they, you know, like gossip about them, like these are deviant people. So that's a, that was a method of social control that used to be, that, w that w was acceptable before. Um, it existed in small communities, like a village in a neighborhood. And what's happening is that kind of behavior is being repeated on social media. So that's why people who don't like members of the LGBT community, in the old days they would be shamed in the village or in the town. Now they shame them on a global platform. And it's far worse because it's global. And now it's not allowed by law. You're not allowed to do this thing. So it doesn't matter that it's true that somebody's gay. It doesn't matter that it's true that X is having an affair with, a, with Y, if they were between heterosexual couples. It doesn't matter that it's true. If it's being shared to harm and embarrass and harass, that's an illegal. Mm -hmm. The LGBT uh, community in Fiji, uh, do you think they are targeted specifically when it comes to cyberbullying and harassment online? It's frequent. It's, it's, it's far more frequent on those um, big group pages like Chat Fiji to, to target members of the LGBT community because they're an easy target. Um, people on that platform all share, or many of them, not all, sorry, many people on that platform share a moral belief that what the members of the LGBT community do is wrong. Um, some of them are uneasy about LGBT activities. Um, because it's, it changes uh, the accepted norms that they've been taught. It's different to what they've been taught is acceptable. Mm -hmm. And you know, members of the LGBT community will also tell you that some of the loudest critics of LGBT people are people who do it secretly, <laughs> you know, because they're personally uncomfortable with what they do. I don't know. But anyway, yes, it's true that they receive um, that members of the LGBT community do receive a bigger amount of bullying and harassment. And that's an area in which, in addition to the Online Safety Commission, the Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission should be doing a more work mm. jointly. Do you accept that the Fijian community on social media love to read and laugh at situations that uh, bring, uh, bring out situations like cyberbullying? Yes. Yes, um, and I, I'm not generalizing for the whole country, but there is a significant uh, number of people in our community who enjoy cruelty and who live vicariously. In some ways it reminds me, and, and this may be an unfair 
um, comparison. But sometimes when I see you know the, the, some posts on these pages and with all of the comments and the laughs and all of the, the emoticons, it reminds me a bit of ancient Rome and the Colosseum, you know, like where people would pack the theater to watch people being killed and torn apart by lions and that kind of barbaric um, voyeurship is, is seems to be what's happening on some of these pages in respect of certain posts. Mm. Not all, some. Mm. Just this death has brought up the issue of cyberbullying. What else has to happen for Fiji to wake up and realize this has to be handled now? It's for the, you know, for the Online Safety Commission, the Ministry of Education, churches, the community, um, to get together and you know just own this issue. Um, wake up to the fact that we're dealing with social media, which is a new phenomenon. Um, many of us have not been raised in a way that teaches us how to deal with it, what's appropriate, what are the manners and appropriate customs for this medium. We don't have those customs yet, so we have to develop them. And the only way we can develop them is to do it as a community and through um, change makers and opinion shapers and you know authorities that educate. I'm not talking about strict regulation unless somebody's harmed, but there needs to be, you know, sort of a concerted effort, including from various ministries, to realize that this is a problem and we need as a community to change our behavior. What's happening now and given uh if things are not done in terms of raising awareness, do you think there's a likelihood someday, somewhere, someone will use live feed of Facebook to harm himself or herself, or even kill himself or herself? It's pos any, any of this is possible. I mean, that's an extreme example, and I hope it never happens. But, you know, anything is possible um, unless we learn how to use it that it comes with responsibilities, that there is no such thing as absolute free speech. You never, never, never are entitled to do something to deliberately hurt somebody else. Mr. Abdel, thank you very much for speaking with us and we wish you all the best. Thank you.